Okay, hi there, welcome uh, to a macro video. In this video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about uh, considering some of the potential gains from trade and look at the export patterns of a cluster of, uh, I hope, interesting countries. First constructed by David Ricardo in the 19th century, the theory of comparative advantage, specialization and trade is, I think, a very powerful one. It's, a, it's an idea, a theory, that has clearly influenced the shape of the world economy. And I think it's one that's actually uh, stood the test of time across uh, many, many decades in economics. Nations identify areas of comparative advantage. They, they have a natural advantage in certain things. They can acquire an advantage in other industries over time. Uh, once that's been done, they might specialise some of their scarce resources of land and labour and capital in those industries. That, that act of specialisation... Uh, creates, potentially creates a surplus of output which can be exported to other countries and the revenues, the export income from selling those goods and services overseas uh, is often important to help finance essential imports. It's often said that trade, global trade, international trade, trade across borders creates potential gains in economic welfare, in consumer welfare and producer welfare uh, and also that for society as a whole. And trade is also seen by many people as a stimulus to the growth rate of a country. Trade can act as a catalyst for a faster rate of economic growth, leading to lots of jo jobs directly associated with trade. Not just in the industries that produce the goods and services that we export, but those that service those export sectors, such as logistics um, and the infrastructure associated with, for example, tra transport and travel. If trade is a stimulus to growth and jobs, that can also lead to positive multiplier effects if you believe, if you think about the circular flow of income concept. So an export business that's doing well might generate some more jobs and people in the local community have more incomes and therefore they spend more and so on. And a higher level of aggregate demand, in particular an increase in the level of net exports, uh, can also add, have a positive accelerator effect on planned investment by businesses. Oftentimes businesses gearing themselves up to trade will need to invest in extra capacity uh, to meet that demand. The patterns of trade of countries are, are often a, a, an interesting revealing exercise in what sort of industries in which they have a comparative advantage. South Korea in 2018 uh, was the, the biggest, the 12th biggest economy in the world in terms of GDP, but actually the fifth biggest export in the world in terms of total exports. And it's got an increasingly complex economy, according to this data from the Economic Complexity Index, which is a fantastic resource. Notice here that South Korea dominates every, by the way, every little, little square or area there is an industry, and then they've been lumped together by colour. So Blue is manufacturing, integrated circuits, for example, cars, vehicle parts, etc., passenger and cargo ships. South Korea has a, a revealed comparative advantage in those kind of industries, LCD screens and uh, much else besides. The more little squares there are, the more industries that South Korea has a significant export potential. And you can see that the vast majority of those exports go to China, Far East Asia uh, and the United States. Relatively little, in fact, to the European Union. Mexico, interesting country. Many people choose Mexico as part of their A-level studies to become a little mini-expert in. Uh, 15th economy in the world in terms of GDP. They're just starting to get in the top, well, they're hoping to get into the top 10 in the world for exports. And again, computers, telephones, cars, delivery trucks, vehicle parts, etc. Lots of things are manufactured in Mexico. Seats, medical instruments, etc. Um, an interesting pattern of trade there. Mexico has uh, developed manufacturing capability and capacity in many sectors. You can see just how important the United States is as an export destination. So crucial to have that trade agreement with the USA and Canada. Thinking about uh, lower and middle income countries, Zambia, uh, just outside the top 100 countries in the world in terms of their GDP, only the sort of, I think, the 83rd biggest exporter, and they have less export complexity, as you can see here. So they're highly dependent on for their exports of goods, terrifically dependent on copper, both raw and refined. Much of their output 
including the goal set to go to Switzerland, China and South Africa. So less complex. Kenya, very interesting country. So the top 60 country in the world in terms of GDP now. But their export sector needs to grow more, more substantially. They've actually developed, uh, obviously they associate Kenya with things like tea and coffee. Uh, nearly 10% of their exports now are cut flowers. That's become a big industry, a big area of comparative advantage for Kenya. Exporting uh, quite a bit, about a quarter to fellow sub-Saharan African countries, uh, yeah, about a quarter to uh, East Far Eastern countries, and a substantial chunk goes to the Netherlands and the UK. In fact, the Netherlands is almost as big as the United States in terms of an export market for Kenya. And the good old UK, we are the number five economy in the world in terms of GDP. That's not that's in, that's in dollars, not in purchasing power parity. We're a top 10 exporting country. Again, areas of advantage, manufacturing in cars, pharmaceuticals, uh, crude petroleum, the whiskey industry. <laughs> and you can see, I think in particular on the right hand side here, our trade pattern, how still dependent we are on the European Union, despite the fact, of course, we're leaving the EU at the end of 2020. So when we think about some of the gains from trade, uh, one an interesting, I think a useful distinction to make uh, for your exams is the distinction between static and dynamic gains from trade. So I just want to finish this video with this uh, with a couple of slides on this. What do we mean by static gains from trade? Well, it's all really about efficiency and the prices that consumers pay for their goods and services. So hopefully trade acts as a, a way of making the allocation of resources more allocatively efficient in the sense that we're specializing for example, in industries where our, our opportunity cost, our relative cost is lowest. And there could be some gains in productive efficiency from harnessing economies of scale as we ramp up production in our export sectors. And hopefully trade through the means of competition in markets uh, is a way also of bringing down prices for consumers. And if prices come down, for example, if we import cheaper imports, that increases their real incomes. And thinking about it a little bit more, that can have quite a significant effect, particularly for families, for example, on relatively low incomes. If the price of imported food comes down, for example, or if the price of imported energy is lower as a result of trade, that can increase the real incomes, the real purchasing power of people whose budgets are, are really quite constrained. Uh, don't worry too much if this diagram looks obscenely complex this goes back to a previous video on the gains from trade and the production possibility frontier so if you haven't seen this one before do go back to my video on gains from trade and the ppf we work through an example of how in this case uh, brazil and chile could uh, by specializing in steel and copper could actually and then trading could actually shift out to their production possibility frontiers and increase their productive output potential now, that is a way of showing some of the gains from trade. What about the dynamic gains from trade? Well, dynamic happens over time. It's harder to show in the diagram. But it's all about really the way in which trade increases the, the scale of choice that you have as consumers, be it the choice of different foods and drinks or places to go on a holiday as tourist destinations. That's really trade. Trade can also increase the contestability of markets. It makes markets more com competitive and in theory helps to break down the monopoly power of existing firms. And dynamic gains also encompasses things like the transfer of ideas, the transfer of know-how across borders, people sharing ideas and thoughts. Collaborative work is part of trade. And if that happens, you may well get a faster pace of innovation uh, across borders, which could be great news for progress, for example, in addressing the climate crisis and making our growth more sustainable. There is a case, I think, for, for saying, uh, perhaps as part of your evaluation, that the dynamic gains from trade actually might be more significant to our lives in the long term. The static gains, efficiencies, costs and prices, we can show those in the diagram, but actually in my, in my opinion, the, the real benefits from trade is the fact that we open up our economies to new ideas, new thinking, uh, and we share we share ideas. The death of distance in globalised world, to my mind, is one of the most important aspects of trade.
Okay, thank you.